Happy holidays. Hi, bring it in. <laughs> hey guys, nothing says the holidays more than talking speed lights. So I thought that we would talk a little bit or discuss how important is the user interface on a speed light? Now, the quick answer is it depends, of course, what you shoot. So if you're shooting in the studio and you're just doing portraits, it don't matter. You could just have a slower user interface because the, you know, the environment is slower. Totally fine. Personally, to me, user interface is so important. Making changes quickly can make a big difference, especially if you're interacting with people and trying to get the best out of people. If you're fumbling on your device, you know, on your speed light, it really takes you away from the shoot. So today let's talk a little bit about what works, what you should look for, and maybe you can be the judge on, you know, what you like the best. Okay, there are two main flashes that I've been using recently. One of them is the Godox 860 version 2. It's a Canon version, although I shoot Sony and also I shoot Nikon. I use a Canon version on there and I'll tell you why in a second. Now what sparked this video is the FJ80 that Westcott sent me. I love this flash. The issue is the way I work, and I made a video about this. I shoot my flashes without looking. I'll link that up below if you want to check that out. So I bought with my own money an FJ80 SE. This is Westcott's newest flash. And my hope was that its user interface would work a little better for what I do. All right, let's start with the flash I use most at events. This is the Godox V862. This is also rebranded. Uh, Adorama has this as the Flashpoint. What's it called? The Flashpoint Zoom Li on. Here it is in the <laughs> in Nikon form. So if if it says Flashpoint on the front, that's from Adorama. That's the Zoom Li on. I have a Nikon version and a Canon version. Now, as an event shooter, I I jump through two modes on the flash. I either need the speed light to work on its own, not triggering any other flashes in the room, or I want it to work as a commander of sorts, okay? So on the Canon flash, right now, it's basically a flash just on the camera and it will fire away. And if I go one, two, three, and hit mode, now I get three groups I can control where this flash is A, I could just hit the group here. This is A, and then if there's another flash, which is B. B is usually my flash that's in a soft box. I can control that or turn it off. And C is usually my hair light in the back or a light that's behind the DJ. So those are the three groups. And I got so used to this that I basically use just these three. The other thing that this did was limit my flashes. I found that if a flash had too many groups, it, you know, it sort of invites you to start adding more and more lights. But this Canon flash would limit me to just two other flashes. And then if I wanted to turn all those off, I just go one, two and hit mode and I'm back to my manual. What do you want? Now on the Nikon and Sony version, the, the flash and this is version two, by the way. I'm going to talk about version three of this flash in a second, but it lost a lot of its uh, usability. For example, if I'm in the regular speed light mode, I can change my powers like crazy. And same thing, one, two, three clicks brings me to the group mode. But now the user interface has changed. So I actually don't recommend Nikon and Sony versions of the 860 version two or this R2 from Flashpoint, uh, because now the user interface, you have to hit group, and that lets you scroll, scroll through the groups, and then you can actually activate you know, the modes. I can change it to manual, or I could turn it off, TTL, manual, turn it off. Um, and then the problem is the group is not activated. If I pick that group and turn it on, you notice when I tried to turn the wheel to sort of raise the power, it's like, oh, I forgot one extra step. And the extra step is you have to hit a plus or minus, which will activate the group. You can now go up. And something that's neat is it stays highlighted for a little while. So you can kind of, I can fire off a flash, then lower it, you can fire off a flash, raise it. So at least it leaves the group active. I want you to think about that because you'll see in other flashes, spoiler alert, the Westcott one, it doesn't do that. 
so I find this one less intuitive because you need to go through the groups plus and minus them. You have to hit their mode first, then plus and minus. And so there's too much pushing buttons. Okay, introducing the V1, the V1 and the Godox V860 version three introduced a much better user interface. Watch how easy this is. So here you have your flash as a main flash. It's in TTL mode, which is automatic flash. Oops, <laughs> so easy, I ruined it. You have your speed light mode here. And you, if you wanna change powers, you do have to activate. You have to push a button to activate. But what's neat is you can go up by tenths. But if you don't wanna go up by tenths, you can actually just go up and you can go up by whole stops. That is very useful and very intuitive and a quick change especially if you double your distance, you actually lose two stops. <laughs> I got that wrong in the last video. If you double your distance to your subject, you lose two stops. So quickly, you may need to manually change the power of your flash. You could just go one, two, and raise that power up twice really quickly. And then group mode is even awesomer. You go one, you're already in group mode because these older flashes had like a a different radio system or something, optical system, which you don't need anymore. So this one goes just once and you're in group mode. And what's cool about here is the groups are at the bottom. So you can just push to activate. It says ABC. And then what's neat, it's highlighted. So once it's highlighted, you can actually go up by whole stops and you can also go up by tenths. Okay, so that's super great interface. The other thing that's great is the flash on the camera is the master. And you don't always want the master to go off. So you can go like this and you can change its mode to off. Now, unlike the Canon, this old ancient Canon that I've been using, what's cool about the V1 is now I have three groups available to me. The master I can turn off and now I can have maybe an off camera flash and an umbrella and two other lights, maybe a background one and a hair light, which is actually really useful. So the V1 has a really great user interface. I would say the one negative about the V1 that I found is the wheel is kind of flimsy and sometimes you push the other stuff by accident. You know, the zoom, you're trying to raise power and you're like, oh, I bumped the zoom. So you have to hit okay and then hit the plus minus. So the wheel is kind of, I wish it was more robust. The other thing I don't love about the V1 is this locking mechanism. I just feel that I like the ones that screw in a lot better, especially this uh, this Westcott one. All right, let's look at the Westcott flashes. Now with the release of the FJ80 SE, this one right here, Westcott addressed a lot of issues I had with the first version. I made a video about the Westcott flash and at the end I said this. So Westcott, make a traditional square manual only flash for me. Uh... <laughs> which was a bit of a joke, but it looks like they listened. Some of these, some of the things I mentioned in that video are on this flash. And the first one is how you turn it on. I'm not a fan of anything that you need to hold down a button to turn on. The FJ80, there's a switch to turn it on. You don't need to look, you just, here you have to hold down the power button and then touch the screen to turn on the flash. So one point for the FJ80 SE on turn on mode. The other thing that's better on the FJ80, the new FJ80, is cycling through the three modes. Your three modes are, first of all, it's speed light mode, where you put it on the camera and use it as speed light. Um, wait, that's not speed light mode. This is speed light mode. Speed light mode here, okay? You can then switch, hit the button one more time, and you are in group mode, and then the third time is in client mode. And here on the FJ80, you go to a home screen and you at, you tell it, hey, I want it to act like a speed light. And then the user interface, to me, like I said, I couldn't really use it because you have to take your face away from the camera, which I didn't find super intuitive. And then the other thing is you have to basically highlight anything that you want to change, which I didn't love either. Like if we're in speed light mode, Hold on, let's see if that turns off for a second. Yeah, it does turn off. You can't just use the up and down to make changes. You actually have to tell it what you want. The reason is because you can change by tenths like that. Now, if you want this to be a commander, they call it host mode. You go back to this home screen, you call it host, and now you have the groups. 
what's neat is you can touch and it will cycle through the sleep, TTL, or manual. And then if you want to go up by whole stops, you could just tap the back. But again, changes were very, very slow, I found, because if you click on, if you highlight the group and you start going up, each little increment goes up by tenths. Uh, so you have to tap 10 times to get to the next power, or you can tap the screen up, but it only goes up. You can't tap whole stops going down. You have to cycle all the way around. So usability on the Westcott FJ80 is a little slower. So the flash is wonderful. And I think if you have studio work and slower work and portrait work, you're gonna be totally fine with this flash. But if you're like me, that's high strung, <laughs> super energy, and I want changes to be sort of in my mind in the background, I kind of want my, I want it to be very intuitive where I can still speak to someone. I can, I can just have them not see me like this. Enter the FJ80 SE. And this addressed a lot of issues that I had, but there are still a few things that maybe could be a little better. So let's start with, let me get my glasses on because I can't see here. Hello. All right, in speed light mode, what I love is you can go down by tenth increments again, but up and if you hit okay like this, it will highlight that and you can go up by full stops. So just pressing the center button, you can go up and down the whole scale quickly. Love that. That's a great improvement. Oh my God, look at my eyes. Hey everybody. Oh my God, I look like Bert. Ernie. <laughs> now, if I press this little M here, that goes to the next screen, which is group mode, which like I told you is another mode I live on all the time. This is where some of the usability of the FJ80 SE uh, is reduced. I wanna show you how it works and maybe you can kind of decide if it's intuitive enough, fast enough for how you work. All right, let's show you how it works. So their groups are highlighted and can be changed by turning this wheel. A through F, okay? And then it cycles around. You can go all the way around to F and then go back up to the top. The group is highlighted that way. And if you wanna make a change, you have to hit the, you can either hit the OK. If that group is highlighted, you hit this, I called it OK, but it's the center button. And then you can go around and spin your flash powers up or down. Oops, what happened? Sorry, OK, let's go up or go down, that's great. And then when you're done, you can hit OK to confirm that. If I wanna change groups, I can go to B, and if I hit B and pick a power and fire a flash, well, if I wanna raise that power again, it doesn't. What happens with the flashes, every time you fire a flash, it de deselects the group. Let me show you that again. Let me do it with A. If I hit OK to raise my power to eighth and I fire the flash, if I wanna lower the power, it doesn't do that. It goes through the groups. So that means if you wanna change your power, fire a flash, you have to hit OK again to keep continue making changes. Fire, hit OK again to stay on that group. If you don't, if you fire and start turning your wheel, it's gonna go through A through F again, okay? Usability. The other thing is you cannot go up by whole stops in group mode. Although here, in this guy, you can go up by whole stops by pushing that center button, which I love. So in group mode, you cannot. So if I pick group C, I hit okay to pick group C. I can only go up by 10. So to get all the way to the one whole power, Lower the flash all the way. <laughs> Man, there you go. It takes a little longer. And again, if you fire the flash to test it, don't try to turn the wheel because you won't be able to. Now, two other gripes with the FJ80 SE. Uh, the first one is that the groups, there are six groups, which is awesome. I love that. Thank you. But if you're only working with two lights 
uh, or three lights, it's kind of annoying that that second screen of D, E, F is there because I found that if I make the wrong move, I jump to the second page <laughs> and I'm stuck in D, E, F. So it would be nice to limit, limit to ABC if you're just using ABC, that way it'll scroll through ABC and not bring you to that other D, E, F. The second mini gripe is that this control wheel is kind of a little, it, it moves, it's a little flimsy, but it sort of has like it's moving around in there, which I don't love. Same issue with the V1, the V1, uh, it just moves around a little bit. These 860s are modeled uh, around the, uh, the Canon, you know, flashes, and they are pretty, pretty robust there, so. I like this wheel a lot better. Now, the good thing about usability is a lot of times it's software. So a company may be able to update the software on some of these flashes to make it a better experience, you know, down the road. So there's nothing to say that if you're watching this in the future, the FJ80 performs a little differently. It was just released a couple of weeks ago. And so it's brand new and maybe they're working out the kinks. So keep that in mind. Would it work for my workflow? It would, but it would slow me down just a little bit. All right, I hope to help you. Happy holidays. I'll see you guys next time.